All right, y'all. We are here with a baseball tutorial, not just out of the park baseball focus today, but just general baseball. And what I'm going to talk about today is some pitching stats that you can use to evaluate major league pitchers. I'm here on fangraphs.com, an invaluable baseball resource. And so let, let me just say what I'm not going to get into and what I am going to get into today. So I'm, I'm not going to get into the baseball savant stat cast data, which is kind of, not kind of, it really has changed how we evaluate all major league players with, since that's come out about five years ago. Um, and I'm also not going to get into the math behind the stats. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to explain why the, what the stats tell you and why that's important about a player. And in terms of the stat cast stuff and baseball savant, uh, I plan to do a separate video to cover how to look at a pitcher's baseball savant page like I did with the hitters where I did one on Fangrass first and then baseball savant. I'm going to do that. So we're going to start here with uh, Luis Castillo, who's a pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Maybe, my, not maybe, definitely my favorite pitcher in major leagues to watch. Uh, his changeup is just super entertaining to watch. Uh, which as you can see here, little thing, he throws it 30% of the time. But, so, here we go. This is kind of like the standard dashboard you see at the top of the pitcher's page on fan graphs. To be honest, uh, there's not a ton here that is uh, really valuable. All of it's relevant, but I think really what you want to focus on first here is ERA and FIP, right? So ERA just tells us how many how many runs were scored when a pitcher was in the game and how many earned runs. So unearned runs that score via error or not do not count. And ERA is definitely not the best measure of a pitcher and it's certainly not the great ultimate measure that it used to be made out to be, but it's, it's still valuable. And so I, I think that's one thing to look at is, is ERA. So when Luis, Luis Castillo, when he pitched last year and was on the mound, uh, 3.21 runs per nine innings scored so and the thing is and we'll get into this in a couple minutes with things that you can see up here era minus and things like that uh era what is a good era versus what a what is a bad era can fluctuate over time just like in my hitter video how i talked about like like what a good ops is now uh was a monster ops like years ago right or so the league average OPS and the league average ERA can change drastically over time. But it can give you a snapshot of how good the team was at preventing runs when that pitcher was on the mound. FIP tries to take the things uh, that are outside of the pitcher's control out of the equation. What FIP does is it gives us a number that scales just like ERA. So you can treat it in scale like an ERA but it's basically only counting walks, strikeouts, and home runs. So you can see the way you might look at this, right? In 2020, Castillo had a 3.21 ERA and a 2.65 FIP. So in the things that, what this is telling us basically loosely is that the things that he could control, he was actually better than the ERA tells us by a pretty wide margin. I mean, 3.21 is a really good ERA these days. 2.65 is like getting into elite territory in major leagues this day for a starting pitcher. So these are the main things that I'd pay attention to up here. I think, you know, war is obviously very important, but I'm, I'll do a separate video just on how war works. Uh, it's a great catch-all stat. Uh, K9, base on balls per nine, uh, I think are better served in percentage forms than per nine. And a lot of these other ones like BABIP, home runs per nine, ground ball percentage, I think were much more useful before we had batted ball data from StatCast. So I don't pay as much attention to those. And then wins, losses, saves, not any way to evaluate pitchers. If anybody wants me to explain why, I'm happy to, but uh, not, any, not even gonna spend the time on it. Pitcher wins are not a good measure of how good a pitcher is. And so now we're gonna scroll down a little bit to, remember I said ERA minus and FIT minus. And if you watch my hitter video, when we had weighted runs created plus and OPS plus, you know, kind of told us, okay, his OPS is this, but how is it compared to the modern day environment? So what the minus stat does, just like the plus stat, is it adjusts for the park and it adjusts for the era that a player 
plays in. So, right, like a 4.5 ERA might be league average one year, and I don't know, 30 years from now, it might be really, really super good, right? So we'd be able to tell that from ERA minus because this is adjusted to 100, where 100 is league average. And so to take Castillo's ERA minus in 2020, for example, it was a 70. That means he was 30% better than league average with, uh, with, with ERA, which we saw up here was a 3.21 ERA. Right, 30% better than league average. And then FIP, as we remember, is much lower, around 2.6. He he had a 58, so he was, what, 42% better than league average in the things that he could control. Again, you know, ERA takes, th takes balls in play into account, which we've come to think, and, you know, some of this has changed since StatCast has come out, but a pitcher has way less control over balls in play than like strikeouts and walk, right? Pitcher has much more control over strikeouts and walks than what happens once a ball is in play. So I mentioned that uh, Ks per nine, walks per nine, I prefer the percentages. And just to kind of go over why, you know, you could have a pitcher, two pitchers who each pitch, pitch an inning and they each strike out one guy. So their strikeouts per nine, which is here, would be 9.00, right? They struck out one guy, one inning per nine. It's nine strikeouts per nine inning. But one guy could have faced three batters and retired all of them. He'd have a K percentage of 33%. And, you know, one guy could have faced, I don't know, say 10 batters and struck out one of them over an inning. And his K percentage would be 10%. So K per nine would tell us they're the same pitcher in terms of strikeouts. K percentage actually tells us, well, no, this... This other dude, the one with the 33% is actually the much better pitcher in terms of getting strikeouts and probably the much better pitcher because I, you know, I would say if you're going to look at kind of the meat of how to evaluate a pitcher without talking about the stat cast stuff and even probably including it, strikeouts and walks. Strikeouts and walks are where I start. And so strikeout walk percentage and then strikeout minus walk percentage is kind of like an all-in-one number for these two numbers. Now, strikeout rates can change over time, right? What was, and it might not also might not be intuitive to you if you if you didn't grow up following and strikeout minus walk percentage. What kind of a good one is? So, there's a really handy chart uh, which MLB Trade Rumors links to this chart in an article in January about pitching stats. It's from BaseballHQ.com, which is a great, great resource, especially if you play fantasy baseball. Uh, it's a pay site, though. And so this tells us what is a good strikeout rate, strikeout percentage, what is a good walk percentage, and a strikeout minus walk percentage. And it adjusts it for years, for the season, because strikeout rates change over time. And you've got it for relievers down here, which it's a bit higher. Relievers strike out more batters than starters because, you know, they're coming in for one inning and throwing max velocity instead of having to pace themselves over six innings or something. But... This is a really handy chart. I would I would say, you know, just Google like MLB trade rumors pitching stats. And there's an article from January 2021 that has this has this uh, chart in it. You can also go find it at baseballhq.com, maybe. I think it might be behind the paywall, but one of the writers had it on Twitter too. Anyways, just check out the trade rumors. So you can see here, I would I would say just focus on the strikeout minus walk. So 10th percentile, so kind of, you know, towards the bottom of the league, strikeout minus walk percentage, 8.5%. Um, league average is 15.9%, and 26.8% is, is 90th percentile. You're starting to get up into the elite pitchers at that point, top 10%. So let's look at, so 26.8 and 15.9 are kind of two bars, and where is was our guy Casillo? 22.3. So 22.3 as we just said here, is much closer to the 90th percentile than the 50th. I don't know, maybe 80th percentile. So he's a really good pitcher when it comes to strikeouts and walks, which is the heart of how I would say to evaluate pitchers. Now, if we want to see how did he do it, let's see how close is he to the 23.5 strikeout percentage. 23.5? Whoa, he was at 30.5, which the 90th percentile is 33.4. So he was a really good strikeout pitcher. So walks middle of the road is 7.5. Where was our guy Luis last year for walks? 
was 7.5. He was at 8.2. So he was a little below average in walks, which is, is a thing for him, especially uh, back there in 2019. It, it, you know, that's a thing for him. If, if Castillo is struggling, he's walking guys. So he's a borderline elite strikeout pitcher. He's, you know, not quite borderline elite. Elite is such no huge words. But uh, he's a solid, solid, very good strikeout minus walk pitcher. But he's a little below average in walks. But he gets there by being so good with strikeouts and not being a disaster with walks. So I hope that helps. Again, ERA, FIP, but then look at ERA minus and FIP minus just to adjust for the environment, and then strikeouts minus walks. That's what I would say uh, is really handy when it comes to fan graphs. And again, uh, you know, there's this max exit velocity, all this. I prefer that from Baseball Savant. Uh, you got batted, batted ball data, which again, this was really handy before we had stack cast data, line drive percentage, ground ball percentage. I think uh, pitch type can be interesting to look at. But again, I look at a lot of these things on Baseball Savant. Pitch velocity, also very important, uh, but again, available on Baseball Savant. So ERA, FIP, the minus version of those, strikeout minus walk percentage, look at those on fan graphs, and uh, I think that's the best way to kind of just get a basic feel for the nuts and bolts of a pitcher which at, without doing like a super deep dive. Any questions on that, let me know. Um, or any anything that you do differently on fan graphs, look at pitchers, let me know. But that's uh, that's the way that I do it.